Welcome back, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the GSL Code S today with Kaldor and Wolf. And we have our next game coming up. It is the Protoss vs. Zerg. We have Violet against Seed. Yep, we just saw Teja 2 1 MVP winning the third game on Whirlwind. Great play out of him, and uh, whoever loses this match will face him, and the loser's match for the winner, of course, or rather, the whoever wins this will face Teja, and the loser will face MVP. Exactly. Um, and I said before, I, I don't know how, like, the thing is, there's a lot of planning that goes into Code S, but when a group, in a group, you can't prepare for only two players because that just assumes that you're going to win, and you can't assume you're going to win. But they may not expect to play against MVP, for example, uh, unless they're playing in the final match. But in this case, they may face him earlier if they lose here. So winning here is important because now they have to face MVP. And, uh, MVP and TBT looks really dominant most times, but I mean, he didn't look as dominant against Teja. And this time, well, I think what both of them are focusing right now is their is current game. Exactly. Yeah. It's the current game. So now we have the first map. It's Antigua Shipyard. Violet against Seed. This is going to be crazy. I love it already. Seed, he's a great Protoss player. He's known for his amazing force fields. They are so spot on. There's, there's no gap. No gap in between his force fields. They don't overlap. They just don't do it. He is amazing. He is so good with his force fields that players like Todd, for example, talked to him and asked him, can you tell me your mouse settings? I want to know exactly how you set up your mouse because I want to be able to do exactly the same. Violet, on the other hand, he's been traveling quite a lot and he has to uh, prove himself in Korea. He does, man. We'll find out if he can prove himself in his round of 16 match against Seed. The game is loading. Violet against Seed, our second match of the group today. I am Wolf. With me is Kaldor. Let's go into Antigua Shipyard. I see you red, but I'm not even stopped. And here we go, Antigua Shipyard, map number one in this best of three. And to the bottom of the map in the red color, we have our Zerg player starting for Team Empire. We have... Empire Violet. Really cool guy. He's one of the most successful Koreans that moved abroad. Actually, I think he is the most successful, If I, I mean, by far. Uh, anyway, and we're opponent. not talking about Koreans that travel, by the way, yeah. because of course we also have players like MVP, like MC. We talk about Koreans that actually moved abroad in order to live there. His opponent's ID, of course, teammate of MVP is AJM Sidi. He's known as the illusionist Protoss in Korea uh, because of his Korean name and also because he uses hallucination a lot. Just give you a little bit of an idea of how good Violet actually is and a couple of events that he was able to win. He won MLG Spring Arena Tour in, uh, well, this year. He won uh, the IAM in uh, Sao Paulo where he took first place at the MSI Battlegrounds. He also took first place and uh, went away with quite a significant amount of prize money. And, well, he's just a player who has been out there for quite a while. He's been winning tournaments. It's not like the, he only participated and took, like, run-up spots, but he actually won a significant amount yeah. of uh, tournaments I think in the front got scene. Third place at GESL, if I'm not mistaken, uh, recently as well. Double drones coming out. He's not gonna. He's very against taking the fast third with his drone. He really wants to push that probe away. One thing that we I want to mention as well while we're talking about his achievements is that in the GSL he actually always ended up taking uh, um, spot 17 to 32. So yep. one of them, he never really advanced this far in the tournament. And this is his chance to uh, pass the round of 16 and move on to the round of 8. Yeah, uh, It's really cool to me, uh, like like we said yesterday when Hongan was playing, to see these kind of older players in the GSL come back. And Violet came and went overseas. And unlike anyone else who has left a Korean team to travel overseas, he has come back stronger and significantly stronger than before that's that's so rare because korea is the best training environment for anyone to live under some people have their own reasons why they move out uh, and move to the united states for example move to europe but 
Violet, man, when I first started seeing him play at lands after he'd been training abroad, I thought, well, it'll probably be about the same, but it actually is so much better now, and he trains mostly alone. He trains a lot, he participates in online tournaments, and he really shows his skill not only online, but also on lands. Well, we don't really have a land mode yet, Blizzard, <laughs> but, well... We're going. We're getting there. We're getting there. At least with the next patch, they're going to implement global something. Play. Yeah, global play and also um, the replay start for so that you can actually restart a game when I'm you. I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, that's going to be great. But well, right now we have uh, a, a, something that we don't see all that often. Actually, we have the wall in off seat at the big chalk point. How do you? How much do you like that? Usually, we see the uh, wall in with uh, making the nexus part of the wall. Right. And Usually, uh, what's your thoughts on the choke? Points? I really, I like the nexus wall off on this map a lot better. This one is a little bit vulnerable, um, and it's it forces you to use a pylon as part of your wall, which I don't really like. But I guess the way Seed has done it is, is good. Um, it can be a little bit risky against early pool builds, for example, because it's hard to cover everything with your first cannon, uh, unless you just unless you're perfect. I just feel more comfortable myself with the Nexus wall. But this is fine. He's got a, a nice wall here. Double uh, Chrono there on the Warp Gate research and the Gateway, which means he's not Chrono boosting his uh, Forge right away. But he is getting plus one, which does indicate he will likely follow up this up with a pretty fast pressure attack. There are a couple of things that you have to keep in mind as well when you start with a wall of like this. Uh, the position of your first pylon is very, very important because what the Zerg player can do as soon as he realizes what you are going to do, if he places down, uh, if he steals your, your nexus, basically, if he just drops down a hatch and your pylon is at the position so that you can't build a cannon in range of this one hatch that he's going to build, then you are really, really in trouble. This is something that we saw over and over again by Slayer's Yu-Gi-Oh! And you have to be uh, quite careful about it. It's a rare strategy, but it's been played a couple of times. And now we already see what Seed is going to do as a follow-up. He is chasing away the Overlord, and then he's dropping four additional gates. He's currently at five. Yep, and he is going to do a pretty big attack yeah. here. The Roach Warren, though, is already on the way for Violet. It's already finished, in fact. His speed is very late here, but he should have enough Roaches to defend against pure Zealot. And look at the timing. This is actually really interesting to note that Violet builds his Roach Warren so early. Usually the most Zerg players would start the Roach Warren now, like at 7.10, 7.15. Yeah. And, well, Violet's Roach Warren is already done. He has the first Roaches on the map. He's spreading his creep to give his Zerglings and his Roaches this extra advantage with the speed. And Seed will try to poke here, but this should not be successful. With the defense that Violet is now just building up, he should be fine. He cancels. Yeah. He does have a second pylon, though. Will he decide to warp in there? I don't no. think so. He's going for the Robo. Yeah, he's going for transition into Robo. His original plan centered more around this gateway pressure, but then he realized, well, this is probably not going to work as well as I hoped it would. And now suddenly, they are walking past each other, and Seed has to realize now that he's in trouble. Bad pathing here by Seed. He's got to be a lot more careful than that. It's not worth losing a Stalker over killing a Zergling. There he goes, gets out of here with just one round of warp ends. As soon as he saw the Roach, he knew, all right, I'm not really going to be able to commit to this. He's on his way home. He has the Robo finishing up two bigger, additional sentries. Well, the bigger question is, how much will Violet commit to this? Yeah. He is going for Lair Tech and is finally starting to drone up, but the army that he has is quite strong. And let's face it, we don't see this many sentries. There are only two of them. Yeah, there's only two, and he's actually coming in here strong, and the force oh field misses. Oh my god, Seed! I cannot remember the last time that I've seen Seed miss a force field. And now he does it and links stream in. He's able to defend against it, but he is hard pressed here by Violet. You know, I thought Violet was going to commit to killing the Forge, but he does decide to back off. He's already done enough damage, decides to go home. Like you said, he's been droning up now. He's adding a few more links in, but five drones on the way as well, balancing his economy and his army very well here. War Prism is on the way with three additional gateways. Looks like Seed wants to end this game. He's not even going to get plus one armor, he is just going to hit with another attack and it's very unlikely you will ever take a third in this game. What you usually try as a Protoss player on Antigua Shipyard, as soon as your opponent, the Zerg, takes the third, you try to get a position on the high ground at the third base, take down the rocks, move up, and if you have sentries with your push, then you can just force field the one ramp and you can take down the third, you back off, you go home. Uh, Overcommitting is Mo well, not always, but uh, quite often it's the, the wrong approach, the wrong idea, because if the Zerg production kicks in and then he's able to kill your army, you will be in a tough spot. But if you just kill the third and back off, you can safely take a third on your own and you can uh, capitalize on it. So right now, we have Seed moving in, but uh, look at this uh, perfect positioning with this Overseer. Yeah, the Overseer spots this. Not going to be able to do anything. Yeah. 
The Queen's waiting already, and a few units are just moving in here, and uh, C's like, well, I guess I'm not going to drop him today. Nope. <laughs> not going to happen. The Overseer will be cleaned up, though. Uh, will he actually be able to see the Twilight Council, though? Uh, no. No. And that's the problem for Violet. So far, he played well. He did everything that he had to do. He was manning up a small attack. He cut uh, his, his drones and uh, built an army. He was able to uh, to kind of embrace Seed's aggression and throw it back at him. But now he doesn't have the scouting information. He does not know exactly what's coming now, but he knows there is no third base. He knows that the Protoss is still on two, so he will not overcommit to his economy. He already has 56 drones, but you can see that so far he, was, he just wanted to focus a little bit more on uh, Zerglings and on Roaches, which is really atypical for Zerg players. Yeah, you're right. Uh, he's, I love what he's doing with this Warp Prism now. I love when people do this with anything, whether it's a Warp Prism or a Void Ray, where you just take a unit that can fly and pick off Creep Tumors with it. Wait. He lost one. Yeah, but there's still three. Did he have four to begin with? Okay. Yeah. That was like really weird. I was like, no, I thought he only had three. So I was so confused. I was like, the Stalker's body parts are on the ground, but he's also in the warp yeah, prism. He, he killed one. But Violet <laughs> now is going for the Spire attack. He's going for the transition into Spire, and this can hit, hit a Protoss really hard. Keep in mind that he's still on three bases, uh, two bases. Seed, that is. Violet is on three, and now Seed is trying to move out here. But the problem is that Violet has 40 additional army supply. Yeah, and even though he has Blink and he's got a few Immortals, he does not have that many. He does have plus two on these Stalkers as well. That one Roach... Is in on trouble. the other hand, Wolf, with this uh, with a spy attack, we don't have fungal. Nope. We don't have anything to keep those stalkers in check. So this might be a bit of a problem. That's why that Zergling fight that he set up is genius, and it is going to be the deciding factor in this he game. I feel will need it. He needs those flanks. We talked about these immortal pushes and how to defend against them. Naniwa himself said they are easier executed than defending against. And here comes the flank. He goes in. The force fields are spot on, but this are there enough of them? He even blinks onto the high ground, and the guardian shield is up the. Roaches are just completely dumbfounded. They don't get in a position where they can attack. These force fields might make all the difference here. Yeah, it looks like they may. See, it's still holding strong here. Both of his immortals are alive and they have plus two. The Zealot's in perfect position to fight the Lings that got in. He had Lings on both sides of his army. The Immortal now being targeted. I'm a little bit surprised he didn't micro it back, but will it matter? Seed now evening the supply. At and the with the Warp time. Prism, man, he just can continue this. He could even have done a little bit better. If Seed would have used the Warp Prism to save those two Immortals, I think Violet would be done by now. But as it is, he still has an army. He still was able to re reproduce his entire army. And this might be the one thing that Seed cannot account for. Oh, but the course, semis! Oh! Oh, God. Oh. I wasn't sure if those were sentries or those were zealots, but I was answered, man. Oh, wow. It he uses he needs those another one. fields. Yeah, he will use it. And that is it. Cancel goes down there. This base is dead. And this game may be over. He's going to go for a big counterattack now, but this is exactly what Seed expects. <laughs> of course he knows it. What else is there? That's the only thing that Violet can do. And immediately, boom, cannon, cannon, cannon. And he walls off completely. He warps in sentries. And this... Well, he will be safe. This wall is not going to be breached. You may not pass. He's pulling a Gandalf. Yeah, man. He is pulling a Gandalf 100%. And I don't think those roaches have a whip even to grab him with if they have won their retreat. No, he's not falling down into the abyss. He is definitely going to succeed here. Violet lost his main base. He lost his tech. He lost everything here. And Seat is walking down the ramp. He really wants to finish it. Yeah. But still... Look at the army. Violet is on 123 supply. Yeah, and these units are a little bit trapped in the main for now. Seed has to be careful, but Violet has lost nearly everything. I don't know why exactly he did not kill this pool. Yeah, that's a little bit strange. Uh, good force shields here again, but he's just using his opponent's structures against him as he kills him. That's the worst way to kill somebody, man. And uh, he's going to take out this hatch. Violet losing a lot of production. He's only got one hatchery left after this. No macro hatch. Seeds force fields this game have not been not been perfect, but there's still I mean enough to win him this game. He's just it, this position is awesome. Now finally we have these infestors. He's building nine of them, and a, well, Violet is clinging to this game. It's not like he's giving up. He wants to take this match. He knows that he is far behind. That he has to make it happen somehow. He lost everything except for his third base. What can he actually do? He needs to wait if Seed makes a mistake. If, if Seed is playing a little bit too greedy, moves out with his force, is losing everything, then he might lose it. But right now, 
it's Seed's game to lose. Yeah, he still has his infestation pit alive. He's able to make two additional infestors. He did get the pathogen glands upgrade, so he's got any infestor he makes coming out with those. He's taken the center base now, and this he may actually, well, if he had seen those stalkers, he would have been able to trap them, but he does not see them. The stalkers may be able to, to attack this base. Well, he's going to warp in units here. I think he's just going to go and kill it. We still still have so much energy left on these sentries. Violet trying to do everything uh, uh, uh. he can, but oh, a fumble ah, though! There it is, and once again the force fields. There's a small gap in there, and look at these force fields. They are like perfect. Well, not perfect, but they're pretty good. They are pretty damn good indeed. More fungals going down, but they will buy him time only because he still doesn't have enough answer for the the strong upgraded Protoss units. That, I mean, he's lost his hatchery at his natural again as well. That's it. Yeah, this is really, really bad news at this point. A few sentries get caught off guard. I have no idea what they were doing over there. Feeling a little bit lonely there, I guess. The zealots were too so, late. The reason why those were there actually is because when he blinked out, he couldn't blink his zealots or his sentries out, so he just kept them there yeah. to attack the hatchery when he remade it, and so he forced the cancel, but... Uh, at this point, Seed is still only a little bit ahead in supply, and there's a Burrowed Zerling preventing him from taking a third Nexus, so this is something that's going to be very frustrating for him. Uh, still no Observer near with that army just yet. It's actually Seed is actually playing this so smart. He knows that at this point, overextending himself would have been a problem, so this in this third base is really late, if you think about it. He was already in a great position before, and a lot of Protoss players would have tried to get this third base up a little bit faster, but he knew exactly that the only thing that Violet could do at this, uh, this point in time was a kind of attack and man up an army. That's actually a pretty good catch there. With yeah, I really like that. that. He also made the Infested Herons first, and then fungled it. Perfectly done. And at this point, Seed not too concerned about that War Prism. He, all he needs to do is hold this third base a little bit longer, and I'm a little bit surprised we haven't seen... Okay, there it is, Robotic Support Bay. It's almost as if he's afraid his opponent's already making a Spire Switch or something, but uh, yeah, he's making that Robotic Support Bay, and that's going to be the nail in the coffin. With that and plus three, those two upgrades will But still, crush. look at the map. If Violet plays this well and Seed is too intimidated, if he waits too long... Yeah, you're right. He might be in trouble. It actually fascinates me because at this point in time, if you think about it, he lost the main base, he lost the tech, he lost his natural, he lost everything. And not only the bases, but also the production. And now he needs to be a little bit careful. With those investors, this is the key. And oh my god, he can fungal everything here. But once again, look at these force fields. They're pretty good. Oh, wow. And now it blinks in. The investors were the one thing that Violet could have used, the one thing he was relying on, but they were not enough. They were not enough indeed. Seed taking game one with a big attack. His first attack, he canceled it. Decided to go in for a second wave, and that was not what Violet expected. Well executed, with the sentries being lifted into the main, that was amazing to see. Yeah, it was really well done, it was a nice attack, and in the first fight we had those force fields by Seed, the two Immortals were shielded, they did their damage, they took down most of the roaches, and in the end he lost the Immortals. He could have done better, he could have even used the War Prism, but as it is, he played in a really exciting game, and then he saw his chance to get into the main base, blink up, get the uh, all those sentries in there, block the ramp, and from this point on, it was a downhill battle for Violet, who so far did a good job. Yeah, he really did. The map of choice for Violet is going to be Daybreak. We talked about it a little bit earlier, and it always amazes me again. And every time I see Violet play in a Korean environment, it's like, at, at first glance, it's like a foreigner is playing. I don't know. It's because he's living abroad, his English is really good. And uh, I always have to remind myself, wait a second, he's actually, he's Korean, he's like a real Korean, it's not like he grew up somewhere else. So. Right. No, I know what you mean. Uh, and part of that goes in that he's such a fan favorite. A lot of yeah. fans uh, overseas really like him. He lives abroad. I mean, he, he seems a like a foreigner well. in some ways. Talking about traveling, uh, actually, my flight back to Korea was so intense that yesterday was uh, kind of the worst day ever for me. Uh, I arrived in Korea and I actually had an, uh, a, a travel that I had a new computer with me. I actually uh, um, got one of those Alienware X51. To, for streaming because they are like really awesome. They're so small, so I w was like, okay, I get it in the box and I can take it to the overhead compartment with me into the plane. But at the airport, they told me, well, you have to, you have to give it up as a uh, second piece of luggage. So I was really, I was like arguing with them a little bit and was like, okay, I really don't want to do that. I want to take it with me. And they were like, no, it's going to be fine. You have to do it. And I'm like, okay. I arrive in Korea and I go down to this luggage carousel thingy and my luggage is gone. Everything is gone, and I'm yeah, like, man. 
what do you mean it's gone? And they're like, we are, we have to find out where it is. And I'm like, hell yeah, you do. <laughs> find it out right now. There's everything in there. My clothes, everything. So like, okay, you had a stop over in Moscow. We think it's still in Moscow. I'm like, what? In Moscow? I was so scared. I was like really scared. There was everything in there. Everything that I own, my old clothes, everything that I brought over from Europe with me. But I have to say, Korean Air is amazing. I love to fly with them. And at first I was really annoyed by the situation, but they were great. They did not only find my luggage, they brought it to me yesterday evening, but they also, they compensated me for my troubles. Yep. They actually gave me $50 and uh, it, that is great. I would come back to that right now. We concentrate a little bit on uh, injury with Violet against Seed, but yeah, 